Hey folks, Jackdaw here. If you're like me and you love playing RPGs like Dragon Age and The Elder Scrolls and you're looking for the next, most definitive role-playing experience, then you should immediately turn your attention to Baldur's Gate 3, an early access RPG that's currently in development at Larian Studios, the Belgian-based studio that's known for developing the fantastic Divinity role-playing games. Now, traditional tabletop games such as Dungeons & Dragons provide the best way to enjoy the role-playing game genre with their deep character systems and rich storytelling. But if you're not a fan of tabletop games or just don't have the time to sit down and play a full campaign of D&D, but you still want to experience an epic fantasy RPG centered on player choice, then Baldur's Gate 3 is for you. Having experienced the early access content of Baldur's Gate 3, I am confident that this will be one of the most definitive Dungeons & Dragons experiences ever created. Interested in finding out why? Stay tuned as I explore many reasons why Baldur's Gate 3 will be one of the best RPGs ever made when it releases properly. First of all, what is Baldur's Gate and how does it compare to Dragon Age? I'll give you one clue about which studio developed the original Baldur's Gate in 1998. I can't stop talking about them on this channel. That's right, the first Baldur's Gate was developed by Bioware and also Black Isle Studios, the developers who created the original Fallout games. Baldur's Gate is the culmination of a long-running series that has changed the face of RPGs. It's also a culmination of what many consider to be Bioware Bioware's finest work. The Canadian studio set the bar high with Baldur's Gate and kept raising it with Neverwinter Nights, Knights of the Old Republic, Jade Empire, Dragon Age and of course Mass Effect. Upon the original Baldur's Gate's release, the game sold more than 2 million copies, breathing new life and colour into the genre and holding up as one of Bioware and Black Isle Studios' most acclaimed classics still today. Flash forward to 24 years later and here we are today with a third entry helmed by one of the best role playing game developers at the moment. Larian Studios. Currently, Baldur's Gate 3 is a very ambitious project that has been in development since 2017. The project launched on Steam's Early Access in 2020 and the game has an expected full release date in 2023. While many modern day role playing games like Dragon Age, Pillars of Eternity and KOTOR take numerous pages from traditional tabletop Dungeons and Dragons like gameplay mechanics, worlds, lore, characters, RNG systems, character creation, etc etc, the Baldur's Gate series is actually set in the original world of Dungeons and Dragons, the Forgotten Realms campaign setting to be precise. And so unlike the aforementioned games, Baldur's Gate adheres as close as virtually possible to following the hefty rulebook of Dungeons and Dragons, which if you didn't know is abundant with its lore, systems, features and mechanics. As you can imagine, creating a video game based on the entirety of the D&D rulebook is no small feat for a dev team. Yet if there's any team that can accomplish such a goal, it's Larian Studios. So getting into my experience, experiences with early access. As a preface, when I say that Baldur's Gate 3 has the same spirit as a Bioware game, even though it is being developed by Larian Studios, the heavy RPG foundations of the series were built by Bioware. And so the innovations and leaps that Larian are making are in some part thanks to Bioware's effort back in the late 90s. So who is the main character, who did I play as, and what's the character customization like? So in early access, you can create your own custom character with many different features and options. When the game is fully released, you will be able to play as one of the origin characters who you recruit into your party naturally, very much like Divinity 2, allowing you to play as a preset character with their own more established backstory and involved narrative. Even if these origin characters were available in early access, I'd still choose to create my own character. At the moment there are 8 races you can currently choose between, Elf, Tiefling, Drow, Human, Gifyanki, Dwarf, Half-Elf or Halfling, with many sub-races to select. Half-Orcs, Gnomes and Dragonborn will also be options at launch. Regarding classes, there are 9 classes to choose between. Cleric, Fighter, Ranger, Rogue, Warlock, Wizard, Druid, Sorcerer and the most recently added Barbarian. Senior writer Adam Smith told PC Gamer, the stories are very much tied to classes at times. Class is such a part of identity in D&D, in a way that it wasn't in Divinity 2. Larian have said that in the full release of Baldur's Gate 3, we'll be able to play as any race from the D&D 5th edition rule set. That means that Bard, Monk and Paladin classes are yet to be added. And honestly, when Bard class is properly added, I cannot wait for that because I will be creating my own funky fresh Bard OC. Now whenever I play an RPG for the first time, I thoroughly enjoy playing as a close reflection of myself, self-inserting as I embark on this new journey blind. And that's exactly what I did with Baldur's Gate 3. I created Jaquette Bogard, a human eldritch knight with a noble background and a strong sense of justice. He is essentially me with muscles and facial hair. Now the character creation as a whole is amazing. I must 
just state that there are so many fantastic options available for your character from massive horns to elegant and beautiful hairstyles. You have no excuse to be boring like me. The character creation is immense and one of the best systems I've actually seen in fantasy RPGs. I just like being boring and starting my characters by self-inserting and as a warning for the future I'll be doing that with Dragon Age Dreadwolf 2. But to compensate I did create a draw druid by the name of Fondacia and immediately with this new playthrough I got a brain companion that I didn't get before and this was because of Fondacia's better dexterity for us showcasing that you can have many different unique experiences dependent on your character's build. Now you also create a significant love interest for your character after you've finished creating your main hero and I love how much this ties into the narrative. It is such an interesting dynamic that I cannot wait to see more of. And your hero's hub is a campsite exactly like Dragon Age Origins. Everyone has tents, there's an adorable dog that you can rescue and you can have midnight conversations with your party. You can rest up and you can gain your health and boost back after a long rest. It offers a nice time to sit back and relax after exploring our heavy combat sections. There are also many key story moments that happen in this hub, like a demon visiting you for a deal just casually as you do. What's the story like? Now, ultimately, story is the most interesting aspect of any RPG, I would say. It's what keeps you coming back and it's what makes you stay interested in the world. Now, Baldur's Gate 3 is no different. As spoiler-free as possible, the initial story follows our new hero inflicted with a tadpole of a mind flayer that will eventually transform our hero and their party into fully fledged mind flayers if they don't do something about it. However, there's something strange about your party's process. In particular, normally a person would have turned into a mind flayer rather quickly, but for reasons unknown, this process is delayed for you and your party. As you progress through the story, your character gains access to more abilities, which allows them to interact with their environments in many different ways, thanks to the tadpole in your head. Essentially, the narrative revolves around you and your party looking for a cure by any means. Because of this rush, there's a sense of urgency that plays into the plot. Depending on your character's own desperation, you could find yourself striking up deals with many shady figures in order to try and save yourself. This story provides many morally ambiguous notions for you and your companions. There are many different choices and consequences. For example, I saved a goblin leader and was given entry to their camp even though they posed as one of the main threats of the first act. I could also kill this goblin leader if I wanted to, but then I would have been quickly shunned by all the goblins and have no allies on that side of town. There are plenty of other quests available as well. Some of them are more combat focused, while others encourage exploration or diplomacy. And while there is a main story to follow through with this chapter, you can go off on your own at any time if you so choose. There are no rails here. You can explore freely without having to worry about missing out on something important later on in the game. In fact, the game encourages exploration. This is especially nice when playing with friends who may not want to follow along with what you have planned for them. They can do their own thing instead, as the game does support up to four player co-op multiplayer. Now, Baldur's Gate 3 is already a huge game. It has a lot to offer already in its early access stage. And it's all presented in such a way that feels like an adventure. But of course, like most RPGs, the story is held by its cast of characters. And that is something that we especially know as hardcore Dragon Age fans. Now in Baldur's Gate, the characters throughout the journey are voiced tremendously by some very talented actors. I'm not just talking about main characters here, I'm talking about all the NPCs. Baldur's Gate 3 feels incredibly immersive. There are so many great, fun and interesting characters that you can talk to. And I literally spent so much time meeting and conversing with many different characters just for the sheer fun of it. Now regarding the Inner Circle characters, I fell in love with Shadowheart instantly. I love her. She is a high elf cleric and she is fantastic. She's funny, she's sweet and she's tough as nails when she needs to be. And she also has a darker side that sometimes comes out. Each of the companions who join this journey are all connected to you by the tadpoles that they all have in their heads, which in turn makes the narrative more imperative as you and your companions want to work towards the same goal despite everyone's differences. And because of that shared connection, you can attempt to read your party's thoughts at given moments. Sometimes in pivotal moments, you can sense their feelings. For instance, I was in a goblin camp and they were looking for a certain relic that Shadowheart had. I could feel her anxiety and I was able to act accordingly based on her feelings. Now connecting to that, one of the most enjoyable, recognizable features that Baldur's Gate has that I completely obsessed over was the character's approval system. Just like Dragon Age, as you go along your journey and make decisions about how people should be treated or what you think about them, your party members will react with every positive or negative response towards you. These can change depending on the situation and how often you show good or bad behaviour towards them. Some characters like bad behaviour, some characters obviously don't like bad behaviour and 
at all impacts how characters will feel about you. And very often, companions will have many things to say on your journey. They may speak up in conversation scenes, or they may just want to speak to you after an event or entering a new location. And also, there's plenty of party banter to go around. I was in a cave looting a treasure chest next to a religious statue when Shadowheart told me I shouldn't do that. I then had to persuade her, otherwise she would instantly disapprove. Fortunately, I was quite proficient in charisma. Honestly, if I didn't care so much about Shadowheart's approval, I would have finished this playthrough a long, long time ago, and this video would have been out probably about two months ago. But because I cared so much about Shadowheart's disapproval of me, even in slight situations, I was always reloading a previous quick save and fixing that straight off. Which then ties into the next major feature, I would say as a Dragon Age fan, the romance system. As you'd expect, you can romance each of the companions who join your journey. Now, I started Shadowheart's romance in the early access, and while it's not complete, I fell in love with it from the get-go. It's so cute and romantic. I remember something that Shadowheart had said to me in the past through branching dialogue, and she noticed that I remembered that, and it made the moment feel so special. And I can't wait to continue that in the full game's release, because it's just so cute, and I'm a hopeless romantic for all that stuff. Now, finally, how does the gameplay feel? What about combat and exploration? Well, you will find yourself immersed in a world where you can explore dungeons full of dangerous creatures, solve puzzles to unlock treasure chests, wield powerful weapons against enemies, and even cast spells to defeat your many foes. The world truly reacts to you. Baldur's Gate 3 is dynamic and changes based on your actions. You can make a difference in this world. You will be able to speak to many people, explore many side quests, and help or hinder the different factions in the game. The fate of this new adventure is up to you. In terms of gameplay mechanics, Baldur's Gate 3 plays very similar to Divinity Original Sin 2, in that there's a lot of freedom given to the player when exploring the world or choosing how you want to solve problems. The combat is much faster than Divinity as well, with party members moving around the battlefield with ease and attacking enemies with skill checks. This makes the combat feel very emergent and fun. The game has a lot of different classes and races that you can choose from, each of them having their own unique abilities that help distinguish them from the others. There are also many different ways you can upgrade your character through the skill trees, so there's always room for personalization. You can use perks, scrolls, or companion spells to boost your own roles or gain advantage. For example, I got a soul coin that inspired my character because of his noble background. This gained inspiration, which is a perk that lets you reroll for a select amount of times upon an unsuccessful throw. Thanks to many perks my companions and my character had, I was able to buff my roles, especially in many diplomatic situations. Honestly, Baldur's Gate 3 is the sort of game where you can interact with everything you see. For example, I was just following a squirrel in a forest, and because I had the animal handling perk, I was able to actually talk to the squirrel. And there are so many emerging gameplay experiences I had like this. I made a goblin kiss my foot because of my proficiency in charisma, and I had a similar situation with three ogres where I was able to convince them to fight for me at any given moment. And there are so many other immersive and emergent experiences that I had that truly defined my first playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. The first act of Baldur's Gate 3 in its early access is a 20 hour contained self story that acts as an introduction to the world, the characters, and their relationships. The early access content here acts as an embellished demo or tutorial to the game, showcasing the potential upon its release next year. While I can completely understand why you may want to pass on the early access for the moment, as the game is still in development and you may just want to experience this game in its entirety when it's out properly, I insist that you do not sleep on this game when it does release next year. As a fan of Dragon Age and Bioware games, this is right up your street. You will fall in love with Baldur's Gate 3, just as I have. If you are looking for a game to play right now while you're waiting for Dragon Age Red Wolf, or you just want a fun RPG to play that you can sink a good 20 hours in, I would highly recommend picking up the early access right now and just having fun creating many different characters and embarking on this truly emergent Dungeons and Dragons experience. And so while this is just a fun impressions video to kind of break the ice on Baldur's Gate content, from here on out, I'm gonna be exploring many aspects of this game's development and keeping a close eye on updates. So if you're not gonna pick up the game just yet and you wanna wait until there's more information on it or you just want to follow through with every single update, you're in the right place for that. And of course, every single update on Dragon Age Dreadwolf's development too. Let me know your thoughts on this video. If you played Baldur's Gate 3 before, what do you think of it? What sort of content would you like to see from me on Baldur's Gate 3? And let me know anything else down below. But until the next one, I've been Jackdaw and I should go. Whoa, 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 whoa.